People I call retrogrades. How to re-evangelize the de-Christianized West. Support us in any way you can, most especially by your prayers. From an authentically Catholic perspective. Right-minded, righteous group that's equal in strength to the radicals. From an authentically masculine perspective. You and your friends versus me and my friends. Bring it on. Happy New Year, everybody, from the Rules for Retrogrades. Today, in our first show in 2020, we come to you live with Michael Voris of Church Militant. We're doing a little little uh, touch-up on a little dust-up in late 2019. Mike, what's up? Dave, what's up? How's it going? How are you doing, Tim? Hi, David. How's it going, Michael? Good to see doing you. Doing well, thank you. You too. Studio yeah, looking excellent. We're trying. We're trying. You're still, just so your viewers know where there's still some pounding and banging coming. Some things got here late. Contractors, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we're, we're going to be up finally live and hot again uh, in the, the week after next. So we're just finishing all this last stuff. So our apologies to your viewers. If you're hearing banging and smashing, it's, it's part. We've been living with this for three months, so I'm near suicidal. <laughs> no, when I asked to do an interview with you, I was like, hey, I want I want the viewer to get the full experience. So I want as much banging and constructing noise in the new Church Militant Studios oh. as possible. And Mike, oblige so people don't take it out of Mike. Yes, I, I'm, I'm very happy to oblige. Share, share the paint. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it looks beautiful. It looks amazing. I, I, you know, I'm going to come out and see it maybe uh, this summer or something. You, in, you invited us out to uh, open it up. And, you know, I had the, uh, the Holy League conference that weekend, but except I'd, I'd love to get out there and see it. It looks amazing, Mike. You're Congratulations. Sure you too, David. You got to come out and see this. It's cool. Sure. No, it sounds great. So, George Weigel, last week, um, wrapping up 2019, had a few things to say about outfits, most notably church militant. Uh, he said specifically that one should pay attention to only about four outlets and not outlets that are independent in their uh, news collecting powers and their commentary powers, like Church Militant. You guys have already hit back a couple times, Mike. I was happy to see that. What say you? What's the proper response to this ridiculous, outrageous claim that uh, Catholic commentators and news should only hail from the establishment? Well, I mean, it's just, it's stupid on the face of it. And, you know, you know, look... George Weigel's not an idiot. He's an egghead, but he's not an idiot. He understands what a conflict of interest is. So when he's referring people to uh, websites that are owned and managed and operated by folks who are in bed with the very people they're supposed to be reporting on that makes them reliable, that's just ridiculous. He knows that. So, you know, look, he's an establishment fellow. He has been forever. You know, he's done some good stuff in the past with, you know, John Paul's autobiography. However, that said... You know, there are a number of things. Here. He's not a reporter. So right. why should he be, re be referring people to, you know, uh, anybody that, you know, this is a good source of reporting? How would he know? He doesn't measure it against anything. And the people that he's referencing, uh, you know, viewers and, and faithful Catholics too, who want to stay abreast of what's going on in the church and the, you know, the disaster and the crisis and the lack of anybody, any bishop stepping forward to fix it. All the people he's referencing people to about that aren't reporters either. <laughs> They've never had a day in the secular media world paid as a paid professional in their lives. There may be right. one exception here or there of somebody who may freelance for them every now and then. But, you know, I mean, the example that comes to mind, I mean, it's, you know, and I'm not saying it because, you know, I think he's a horrible, evil man and wants to destroy the church or anything. But, you know, uh, let's, you know, call a spade a spade. J.D. Flynn, who is the right. editor in chief of Catholic News Agency, has not ever had one single job in the media. He is a canon lawyer, and I suppose depending on which canon lawyers you speak to, he's just sort of fair to partly cloudy in that area, but that's not my expertise, so I don't really know. But journalism <laughs> is my area of expertise. My entire life has been this, and I can tell you when I smell a fake journalist. 
and right. the fake journalism. And that's what these guys are. I mean, uh, you know, are there good writers and, you know, good, you know, dogged reporters at uh, Nath- National Catholic Register? Sure. Ed Penton immediately comes to mind. Uh, but yeah. when you, know, you look across sort of the panoply of the whole the whole thing, I mean, George Weigel doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, really? I, I mean, <laughs> uh, I guess the attacks on Weigel for recommending CNA in you know various com boxes and the commentary on first things where his article appeared brought out you know the uh, the insecurity of JD Flynn who felt the need to jump onto Facebook and say look how great we are we break all kinds of investigative stories and look at right. all the results we get and no one does investigative journalism like CNA Catholic News Agency like are you out of your mind <laughs> you, you haven't you, you what stories have you broken that have actually uh, that somebody else in the uh, you know the forbidden zone of the uh, of, of real Catholic media online, what stories have you broken that weren't already broken, uh, you know, by folks like us? Not just us. I mean, I obviously am most intimately familiar with our stuff, so I talk about that the most. But you know, there's all kinds of other groups out there. Michael Hitchborn with uh, uh, you know Lepanto does yeah. all kinds of deep dive investigative reports, thoroughly researched investigative reports on uh, the whole social justice warrior mentality at the Bishop's Conference when it comes to collecting money for CCHD and Catholic Campaign for Human Development and CRS. And, you know, we ourselves have done, on just on the financial scandals, you know, the very fact that almost no diocese in the country uh, feels the need, just from an ethics standpoint, you know, forget about legal because they don't need to legally. But why doesn't every diocese in the country have its financials right there online? Right. Why doesn't it? I mean, that's a that's a see. There's a journalist question. I've never heard CNA or anybody that, that Weigel recommended ask the question. Why don't the bishops release their financials? I mean, there's a party that they're all in love with. The Democrats are pounding on the table and you know having to be you know straightjacketed because Trump won't release his tax returns, which he's not bound to do. Why won't the Why won't the bishops release the the you know the tax statements of the USCCB? Why doesn't each diocese post its numbers? Why can't Catholics who support all of that with their money in the uh, in the plates? Why can't we say how much of our money goes to pay your legal bills? Amen. I think that's a valid question. Yeah, here's what Weigel actually said for those of uh, our, our viewers who got a little behind on this story. Quote, resolve to limit your exposure to the Catholic blogosphere. In 2019, many Catholic websites went bonkers. There's no need to click on sites that specialize in all hysteria or all propaganda all the time. If you want reliable Catholic news, visit the websites of Catholic News Agency or the Catholic uh, National Catholic Register. If you want sane commentary on the turbulent Catholic scene, go to the websites of Catholic World Report, good site, First Things, and The Catholic Thing. That's more than enough for anyone. Limiting your blogosphere browsing to these sites while ignoring the hysteria mongers and propagandists. Blood pressure while keeping you well informed. The ironic thing is that um, I wanted to point this out before going to Dave here. Uh, J.D. Flynn over at CNA, he's saying that they've covered so much in 2019. There's a direct conflict of interest, right? They are establishment media. But, I mean, the heart of these stories has lied in attacking establishment church and establishment media. So that there's there's a facial contradiction, isn't there? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the, I, you know, look, first of all, Catholic World Report does do good reporting. And I don't want to say that, you know, that yes. CNA never does a report worth reading, although... Just so your viewers know, there is an unwritten policy <laughs> at the Catholic News Agency that uh, church militant may never be mentioned in any story. Uh, really? Yeah. So here I am publicly saying, you know, CNA, you know, occasionally turns out an article, investigative article, uh, that's good, but. Uh, you know, it's always after the horse has left the barn, whatever the story is. They don't, you know, where were they on the Bishop Malone story, for example, in Buffalo? We yeah. ran him down in the airport over a year ago saying, how come your investigations are all frauds and shams and you put these guys back in power? And he, you know, we chased him down in the airport, happened to be on the same plane with him a year ago, November, coming back from the Bishop's Conference. Where are they on the story of, um, you know, Archbishop Vigneron here in Detroit persecuting a fine, good priest who's got... You know, I mean, I don't know how many bishops in the United States have, uh, you know, requests in uh, motions filed with the court to have the archbishop, quote, taken out in handcuffs 
am right. put in jail until he produces the documents, closed quote. Now, that's pretty severe language. Where's CNA's reporting on that? You know, is it, I, you know, I, I've got to ask, is it because Vigneron is now vice president of the USCCB that they haven't gone near the story? What about hmm. Bishop, Crook, Bishop uh, Michael Hepner in Crookston? Uh, the man's as crooked as can be. He's appropriately in the Diocese of Crookston. Um, you know, the man lied on deposition, on video, that we have posted on the number of Vortex episodes and stories here. Just flat out lied. And he said in one, I mean, unbelievable that you think a successor of the apostles would say this. The bishop, the, the, the uh, plaintiff's attorney asked him, this is on video, we've aired it, I think, twice on uh, our own website here. Um, the, the plaintiff's attorney said to him, do you, uh, so there's this one priest you put back in, uh, uh, you know, uh, position in authority and ministry, and he admitted to various parishioners at multiple parishes that he has a problem lusting after teenage boys, and he, and he uh, secretly masturbates thinking about them and has to leave the room when some of them come in because it's too big a temptation or he's going to, like, sort of jump on them and maul them. And wow. that's the priest that the plaintiff's attorney is describing to Bishop Hefner. And he says, did you know about all of this ahead of time? He said, no, that was a lie. Uh, he said, well, now knowing it, would you put him back in ministry? Would you still put him back in ministry? And he said, well, I don't see how any of this necessarily, you know, prevents him from being an effective priest. I mean, <laughs> your, your jaw hits the ground. Where's CNA's reporting on that? I don't know. That kind of seems like something you might want to investigate. See, they, they can't go after this stuff. Now, if Hepner gets booted, well, then they'll be all over him. But until he's booted, can't touch the USCCB and all their little cronies. And it's it's just completely disingenuous, completely disingenuous. And Weigel's a, you know, again, Weigel's not an idiot. He knows what he's saying. So, you know, I'm sure he understands there's a conflict of interest there. But he completely erases that as an issue and just plows forward because he's got a dog in the fight. So, Michael, let me uh, let me jump in and just ask you briefly, what is with the lack of mainstream reporting on some of these issues with teeth, on some of these more controversial issues, but nevertheless things that people want to know? Well, look, you know, one of the problems when the church started to fall apart with the religious orders, the idea of a lay media uh, was is completely brand new in the church in the last maybe 50, 60 years, when you've had a couple of things like the Wanderer that have been around for a while. But yeah. every single thing run in the church, all the publishing houses are run by the Paulists. They're all done by religious orders, uh, the diocese own newspapers. If there was anything that was sort of a Catholic publication, it came from the bishops or a religious order or a religious community or something like that. The idea of a media, a Catholic media, is completely foreign in the church. The whole idea of a free press media is a foreign idea except for the last couple centuries in the world. <laughs> yeah. So now you have that sort of moving into uh, the church and, uh, and when the religious orders fell apart and the lay people sort of stepped in to fill this vacuum, uh, you know, of, of keeping the publishing going, they became immediately beholden to the bishops. They pay their salaries, you know, their salaries, you know, support their children. They pay for their mortgages, their car, their health insurance and everything. So none of them want to, um, you know, none of them want to upset and bite the hand that feeds them, really. I mean, that's the bottom line. So, you know, they'll go, they'll sort of walk up to the line a little bit so they won't look like they're complete apologists, but they'll never cross the line and become authentic journalists. And the second reason, I think, is because I'm not sure that many of them actually know how to. They're really, really, when it's done at the end of the day, if you read most of the stories on these sites, they're really just, you know, press releases being rewritten. Right. The USCCB issues a press release on this or that, and it's really just sort of a rip and read. They take the press release from the bishop or the diocese or the religious order or whatever it is, and essentially rewrite it. Uh, but that's really what you're, because that's what they are. They're really, you know, communications department workers, you know, who sort of kind of have, you know, they sort of are under the umbrella a little bit of media, but they're not reporters. They're not news reporters. They're not investigative journalists. They don't know how to do it. But uh, there's a market out there for investigative reporting in the Catholic world. I mean, if somebody, if some outfit dedicated itself 
to obviously like like church militant does but even among the more let's say mainstream like national catholic register or ewtn news or something to that effect i think they would grow and swell their base you know and they would but they'd have to They'd have to break off from the. Uh, they'd have to break off from the from the bishops to do it. They'd have to be independent. And right now, that you know, they're look. They're not willing to take that chance. Do so you really think the brass at EWTN, uh, for example, you know, Doug Keck and Michael Warsaw, are they really going to say, you know what? What's more important here than us maintaining our salaries? Some of them very hefty salaries. Uh, is that we just get to the truth of something. So they kind of, they, they, they psych themselves up to say, well, look, we're making little instrumental changes here and there. You know, we're moving the needle a little bit here and there. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's important as, you know, J.D. Flynn has said, you know, we want to stay in communion with the bishops. Well, you want to stay in communion with the bishops as they're covering stuff up? You know, right. that's a nice phrase being in communion with the bishops. It makes you sound all, you know, connected and orthodox to the magisterium. But what you're connected to is a bunch of crooked men who have just as much reason to use you as you do them. You help keep them in power because you won't tell the truth about many of them and their circumstances. And they help keep bread on your table because you carry the water for them. So, you know, the fact that this is who these are the folks who George Weigel recommends you to to go get your information from uh, is certainly enough to be able to say, you know, George Weigel's completely off base in this respect. And if he's off base in this respect, I, again, he's a smart guy. I think he's deliberately deceiving people. Again, he sucks at the teat of the Catholic establishment. He gets to go around. And, and what are these? You know, J.D. Flynn and a number of other people will say things like, um, you know, pardon our noise. Uh, we'll say things like uh, they don't have, uh, 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 you know, we want to make sure that we're, you know, we're trying to do the best story that we can. And we don't want to, you know, drive people away from the church and all that. that that's ridiculous. Right. That's ridiculous. I mean, first of all, I don't know how you could possibly accelerate the drive of Catholics out of the church any more than it already is. And, uh, you know, for goodness sakes, have some integrity. I don't honestly don't know how these guys go to bed at night. You know, well, I, I don't know that they actually interview victims. I don't think they do. I don't really read enough of their stuff because I don't like reading press releases. Uh, but, you know, you don't really see headlines of, I mean, we were the first people to interview James Grine, uh, you know, McCarrick's victim. We gave him a stage there at, uh, uh, in Baltimore a year and a bit ago. Right. Baltimore 2018. And then sat down to an extensive interview with him. We're the ones who interviewed Father Paul uh, Kalchik, you know, chased out of Chicago by Blaise Subas for burning the, the gay banner. Uh, that belonged to the parish he was the pastor of, and he had every right to do whatever he wanted to do with it. Uh, you know, we've interviewed tons of these victims and everything. And I just don't think these guys, you know, the 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 Weigels, the Flynn's, the 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 Michael Warsaws, the Doug Kecks, they don't think in terms of the ramifications of what these men are doing. I mean, think of all the all the uh, victims under uh, you know Bishop Malone in Buffalo and the previous bishops who were there under him. You know all these gay pipelines that they set up under McCarrick and Bernadine back in the '80s to bring up you know scads of gay men from South America uh, and flood the uh, you know the U.S. priesthood with them. I mean, yeah, you know what are these what are people hearing in confession at the hands of these guys? What are they hearing in the pulpit? Uh, you know, they, many of these guys have active gay lovers. We did a poll last week of our viewers, and I think we had two or three thousand respondents. Respondents, and they said uh, what percentage. Uh, what percentage of uh, priests, American, you know, I presume it's U.S. priests, uh, do you think are uh, actively gay? And the, an enormous number uh, said uh, 20% or more. 20% or more of Catholic priests are actively gay. That's what it, I, I think the number was like 75% of the people who responded said, yeah, I think 20% or more of Catholic priests are actively gay. This is I, popular I, opinion among Catholic faithful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's an astounding percentage. Three out of every four American Catholics walking around, faithful Catholics walking around, thinks that, you know, 20 percent of priests or higher have uh, have active gay lovers. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, and the bishops get together in Baltimore and they're just dis- and what they're discussing is DACA. Really? Which is why the, the tone deafness, it is the tone deafness of a George Weigel, very bright guy. To come out and to say, it with, with amid that, three out of four Catholics think that uh, too large a percentage of 
practicing Roman Catholic priests are, are active homosexuals. And to say resolve to limit your exposure to the Catholic blogosphere in 2019, this, this sounds very much like bad optics, bad audio. It sounds like he's just saying, look, you know, um, see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil, bury your head in the sand, and that's the way to be a good Catholic. That, this is like what the Protestants used to say that the uh, consistent yeah. in the heart of the Catholic Church. No, yeah, we want it. if it's true, we want to hear it. What's funny about that is if you read the first part of his article, it starts off saying 2020, you know, brace yourselves, 2020 is going to be a horrible year. You know, these scandals and things are actually going to get worse as yeah. more information comes out about. And he ticks off four or five, six different things. You know, the attorneys generals all over the all over the country doing their stuff. And, you know, uh, just all the, you know, the lawsuits, the selling off of more property, the decreasing size of parishes and dioceses and all that. And, and yeah. True. Check, 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 check. Who, who, who is the uh, uh, organization or organizations that brought all of those things to light? <laughs> you're the looking, people you're condemning. You're looking yeah. at it right here. Here, yeah. LifeSite News, uh, you know, uh, 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 Hitchborn uh, at Lepanto, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chris Mannion, uh, The Wanderer. All of us are the ones who brought all this stuff. And now you're saying people don't pay attention to us. And by the way, everything that they've been telling you about, and they've been unearthing, is going to get worse. But don't watch them and pay attention to them. Just come over here and have your sucker right. and you have your feet rubbed. Right. But, and the... I mean, obviously, the solution to many of these problems that are being decried by even those in, in the mainstream Catholic media, the solution is a little bit of sunlight, right? It, which is exactly what we need to do is dredge things up, have investigative reporting. You don't solve problems of public or, you know, backdoor scandal by keeping it in darkness. You need the sunlight to come in and disinfect it. And that's exactly the purpose of reporting, right? I mean, if you if you just take you know the, the 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 sort of parallel version of the free press in a culture, you know, the United States free press, First Amendment, freedom of the press. What's the purpose of it? It's to be a watchdog on the government. That's what it is. So that people's rights aren't infringed. So that leaders are held accountable. Blah blah. Well, none of that transfers over into the ecclesiastical world here in the church because there was this resistance to it and they send out these attack dogs. I firmly believe that George Weigel did not sit in his house and just say, oh, I'm gonna talk about, uh, let's say the Catholic blogosphere is poisonous. I, I think these come out of conversations he has. I think he gets sent on a mission, either directly or indirectly. You know, they're, they're all sitting in the same echo chamber talking about, you know, this, that, and the other. And, and why do they, you know, J.D. Flynn, for example, among others, uh, has said that the reason they, um, uh, you know, they don't get money from the bishops. Bishops don't write them checks. Well, okay, that's true as far as it goes. No, you won't go find a line item in the USCCB budget. USCCB budget, uh, you know, two hundred million dollars to, uh, you know, Catholic news agency. But what you do get, what they do get or going along with the scandals and helping cover them up or choosing in many cases to just not cover them uh, is they get access. The bishops come to them and give them interviews. Uh, their papers get promoted in the, in the, in the diocesan you know, uh, newspapers and you can pick them up in the back of the parish and their ads are inside the parish bulletins and the, their writers and reporter reporters, uh, you know, go to diocesan conferences and men's conferences, and they go on speaking tours, and so you build up this sort of air of respectability. That's what they get, and that air of respectability gives them access to all of these church of nice, you know, dotes who have been. Uh, I guess I shouldn't call them dotes. It's not entirely the laity's fault who haven't been catechized, but at some point you got to step up and realize, wow, something looks wrong here, and you know, take the onus on yourself. But for those who haven't, they just sit in mass, you know, on their cell phones and in their you know finest beachwear on Sunday, sitting there listening to Father drone on about immigration or something else or whatever. And then you know, CNA gets to swoop in with a speaker at the end of mass, or they get to promote the uh, you know the diocesan collection for this. Or, I mean, it's. It's an entire network. It's it's a system of how business is done, and these folks like CNA and you know National Catholic Register, all of them are inside that system, and they're all feeding each other. It's a symbiotic relationship that they all profit from, 
Except the problem is, and they, none of them will talk about it, is that the ship they're on is is getting, you know, there's less room on the ship because it's sinking. And they're all just having to crowd up to each other. And we're saying, guys, you got to stop this. You got to, this is the Catholic Church, dang it, established by the Son of God to save souls. And you people are ruining it. You're ruining either directly. So you got people like McCarrick and Whirl and Bransfield and, you know, Malone and, uh, you know, uh, Hepner and, and Crookston, all over the place, who are actively involved in this gay stuff. And they're covering it up. They're doing it themselves, whatever. There's the massive, massive theft, a half a billion dollars from Peter's Pence. Uh, you know, twenty-five million dollars stolen from the the uh, uh, papal papal foundation. Uh, you know, uh, overseen by Cardinal Parolin, the Secretary of State at the Vatican, who took the money and then said, "Yeah, we'll pay you back with a, we'll just consider it a loan." And then they, you know, the people who who were saying, "Hey, where'd our money go?" Say, "What are the terms of the loan?" Well, there aren't any. When are we getting paid back? Well, you know, whenever he feels like it. Uh, what's the collateral? Well, there isn't any. Uh, what's the interest rate? There isn't any. And <laughs> we uncovered that story. We're the first ones to report that story. And then a month later, CNA's like, oh, look at the story we broke. You didn't break that story. So this well, is in the, the, in the Catholic stuff. world, there's no real meaningful distinction to be made between independent news outfits and otherwise. So the, the, the heart of what Weigel's saying, aside from the contradiction and saying, look out, 2020 is going to be explosive. The only outfits that have brought you this are the ones I'm critiquing, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, infra. But the other heart of what he's saying is that, um, I guess, avoid independent, not only news agencies like like you guys, but but independent blogs on the blogosphere. Absolutely. What, what is the what is the heart of the distinction for independent when he's insisting and JD Flynn and all of the so-called establishment guys are insisting we're not on any payroll that would designate us the official ones? What what's the room for the What's the ground for the distinction? It seems to be just they're honest ones and dishonest ones. Yeah, I mean, there's people, you know, clearly to use the old expression, you know, have a dog in the fight. The there are people who have a vested interest, and it's all those establishment guys, this, you know, the CNAs, National Catholic Register, ZWTN. They have a vested interest in ensuring that the establishment stays well oiled and keeps just, you know, grinding along because they benefit from it. They don't necessarily benefit, like we said, if they get a check written to them, but they get as close to that as you can because they get the, uh, you know, the afterglow. Uh, they get what in the, the auto industry they call the halo effect. So if you're near the church and it appears you have the church's blessing and the bishop's blessing and they like you and that, you know, well, now all of a sudden, then they've got you because now you can be cut off. So you have to play along with it. And, you know, if you're somebody who's sort of, you know, a lay person, who kind of wandered into the game and just said, "Oh, I'm a journalist, or I want to, you know, help report, and I want to help the church." You just kind of wandered into the, you know, the menagerie of all of this, and then all of a sudden find out, "Ooh, I better not say anything, or they're going to fire me." And I, I'm sort of, I, you know, I, I can't provide for my family, and I can't pay for my mortgage, and what am I going to do? And who's going to hire me when I work for a church communications outfit? And so they have them kind of trapped. And the more sinister bishops among them, and there are sinister bishops, more sinister bishops among them know that. George Weigel used to defend the full-throated defense of Cardinal Whirl. Whirl, yeah, Donald I remember. Whirl. Donald yeah. Whirl was a, you know, I don't want to say exactly, but read my mind. Uh, and what a disgusting human being that man is. When all of this news broke about McCarrick, remember his interview with the plagiarist Thomas Rosica at the Knights of Columbus, another, you know, establishment organization, you know, Rosica's there covering it for his salt and light TV garbage out of Canada. Uh, you know, all tied in. They're all tied in. All the hands are in the same gloves. And uh, he's interviewing World and the news broke. And World's like, oh, I don't think it's a massive, massive crisis. Really? <laughs> oh, so what exactly do you consider a massive, massive crisis, your eminence? And, uh, you know, Weigel, Weigel's defended him, you know, tooth and nail from, you know, the, the second he, you know, got in touch with them and became, oh, look at me, I'm rubbing elbows with the Cardinal. They're also impressed by these guys' titles and everything. And, you know, they have the benefit and it's, it's the sycophant symbiotic relationship that's just revolting. And yeah, you're going to call us out. You're going to call out the independent, honest media. You, yeah, well, you better be prepared to get the punch right back in the face. And that's what we're doing. 
Yeah. What uh, I was glad to see Dr. Janet Smith, you know, yeah. calling at least part of what Weigel said foolish. Uh, that that was that was heartening. What I mean, I guess to to go to close this out, like, what are we to expect in 2020? I remember a, a conversation between you, Taylor Marshall, and myself about what what should we expect in 2020. I, I say expect the worst. What do you say? I think uh, well, as far in conditions in the church, you mean in that arena? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I I, th I think things are going to become a lot more revealed. Uh, in 2020, there's a there's a momentum going on. If you're a college football fan, you know which sidelines has the big mo. I think the revelations, the sunlight, to use your term, uh, David, uh, your analogy, it, it, all the momentum is on this side. And I, and I think that's what Weigel is saying. I, mean, I don't think it's what he's saying. It is what he's saying. A lot more stuff is going to come out. So now they've they've already kind of started the pre-damage control. I mean, we have information uh, that the McCarrick report from the Vatican is going to be released. Uh, in the next 10 days. Uh, we also have information about some of the uh, aspects of that report. I don't want to get into them right yet. Uh, that report in terms of who assembled the information. And uh, based on who assembled the information, uh, who is the Vatican's lead on it or one of the leads, we can take a good idea about how it's going to manage to whitewash everybody in the Vatican right now. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's th th there's a lot more. I mean, here we are in January. <laughs> It won't even be January 15th, at least from what our sources have told us, and that McCarrick report is coming out. Well, there's a great way to kick off the new year, isn't it? And it's only going to get worse from there. Yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, so you guys have uh, a few bites on that that story? Yeah. Anything anything you can share here or, or nothing? Uh, well, let's just say that the uh, uh, it is in everybody's interest who has been doing the investigation to reveal only the bare minimum of what needs to be revealed. Uh, uh, it, again, it's establishment, and everybody's got a dog in the fight. Right. That's Michael, if you could, uh, if you could uh, have any words for the establishmentarians, kind of words of exhortation or encouragement, any, any wisdom you could draw, what would you say? Uh, to the establishment media types, I would say, if you really believe the Catholic faith and your salvation is the most important thing to you, you better turn around 180 degrees because you are part and parcel of this cover-up and this destruction of the church. And you're going to have to give an account to Almighty God for that when you die and you stand in front of him. And, you know, brother, we've all got our sins, but, you know, cooperating and fighting the truth fighting truth against it. Everybody sins, that's bad. But to fight against truth and then pretend to yourselves that what you're doing is okay because you don't want to hurt the church when, you know, when you have a vested interest in it. It's hypocritical. And, uh, you know, when you fight the truth, you fight Christ himself. You better, for your own souls, you better stop and look in the mirror and stop what you're doing. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Mike. I know you're, you're behind time here. Uh, the studio looks great. I'm excited to see it. Still, in. still a mess right now, but it's getting back together. <laughs> cool. It's exciting. It's exciting what you guys are doing. Everybody support Church Militant, support Mike and, and Christine Niles. We, we always do. And, uh, you know, any, any help you need in the uh, evil Catholic blogosphere, you just let us know, Mike. It's always great to see well, you. Well, here man. it is. This is the inside of the evil Catholic blogosphere right here. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, great. Thanks for your time today, Mike. And, uh, We'll be catching up with you in uh, 2020 as it catches its stride. Thanks for thanks for thanks for coming on, Michael. We appreciate it, and it's always good to see you and talk to you. You guys too, man. God bless, and you have a uh, you have a, a blessed New Year, and uh, we will be back in touch. I'm almost certain of it. Of course, good job, Mike. God bless Peace. you. Keep God up the work. Bye bye. Bye bye. We'll do a uh, wrap here on Rules for Retrogrades. Everyone, uh, happy new year. This is the first show of the year. Please uh, hit the subscribe button, share, and like. Tell your friends. Look at us on Patreon. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.